Hi everyone, it's Terry with Covered Chipboard, and I'm back with the probably the final video for my um, haunted house series and um, or project rather. I've done a lot, and I'm going to show you. I've got a couple of tips. There'll be another little tip video um, in here somewhere on the post. But this is what my house looks like so far. Um, you can see I've added the top railings and I've created a fence. Um, I've covered the base with paper. I think we did that in the last video. But I've gone back and added an extra base because I wanted to do the fence. And the fence is optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You could just put your top railings on and add your steps and um, leave it your little porch overhang and leave it at that. But I'm going to go a little further with mine, so it's kind of up to you as to how much, how decorative you want to get with this. But I wanted to show you how I created the um, fence railings uh, and the front porch area. These were just cut out of paper. Um, they're the cric uh, Cricut Craft Board is what I cut these out of. And I didn't do anything special on them, really except for add a piece at the bottom so I could glue it to the top and I'll show you how to do that. Um, for the bottom, you can see I've added, I extended my base beyond our original base ended here. And I've added two sheets, or actually it's one sheet that's down here and another sheet that's up here. You could make it all one piece. Because I wanted, I didn't like the fence right up next to the house, as close as this base was because I wanted to make the taller fence. So I just added a couple of inches around for an extra base. And I'll put the measurements on my blog post about how big that base is, but you can see it's about almost an inch over here and there's about two inches in the front. And um, so what I'm gonna do is show you how I did the fence these were uh, Cricut Design Space files. You'll need to have Cricut Access, need to be a member of Cricut Access to get these files. I do have them, um, a link to the whole file for all the fence and the railings and everything uh, on, the, on my blog post, so you'll know what I used. And, um, but you will have to have access or purchase that file in some manner. I'm not sure how much that is or what it would be, but here is a piece for the front porch that I just completed. This will be attached here. There'll be one on each side, and then this is the roof, and it will be attached on top. Um, and again, you don't have to do this front, part, front porch part if you don't want to. You could just attach this, and I did make uh, some posts that were it's just the cardstock folded over four times to create a square post that you could use to hold your porch up. And that's in the file as well. Um, okay, this is a clear acrylic or clear plastic that I get. Um, but it comes, it's got a little protective covering on each, on both sides that you peel off. And then it's just clear. But it's pretty thick. And it gives you the weight for the fence to not be flimsy. Let's see if you can see. See, it's not flimsy like it would be if it was just cardstock. So um, I, I think that really works out well. And it's clear, you see through it, so you really don't notice it when you're first looking at it. <clears throat> On the fence rail, I did create a piece here for the corner. And it's, you just fold it in half and glue it on where your pieces meet. So it kind of finishes off that edge. That's in the file also. And um, let me go ahead and show you the fence first. But what I've done is I just took this piece that was cut out and I measured the length that I needed. Hopefully this is in camera. The length that I needed and cut it at that point. Then I peeled off this uh, protective coating on the plastic and you glued this to the plastic and once it was glued to the plastic on the other side 
I peeled off the protective coating and then I cut these strips. They're quarter inch by uh, one fourth inch by 12. And I put score tape on it. Peel your score tape off, glue it to the bottom. Then this will glue to the base right up here of the house. And that gives it something to hold it on there steady. So, um, that's how I did that. No big shakes. And again, that's in my blog post. I'll show you how I did I that. I wanted to do a quick little video here about, um, this is part of the uh, front porch. And it would be the same for the um, railings and the fence area. The best way i found to weave this, because it's real intricate, is you want to try to pick out these little pieces like that first. It's hard to do holding the camera and sorry if it's shaky. But pick these little pieces out first. And then once you get all these little pieces picked out, um, then you can pull all the rest of your cardstock off. But you'll find that it will come out much easier if you'll do that. Otherwise, they tend to tear if you're not careful. So, um, that's just a little tip for you. Also, I have placed my cardstock where it is, um, the, uh, shiny side is facing, is down on the mat. Because that way, when you pull it off, your better cut is at the bottom. So, it will look nicer. Also, these two pieces will have to be folded. And your score line on the back side of the cardstock or the wrong side is best because then it will fold easier. So that's just a quick tip for you. As far as the front porch goes, how I made this section, same thing, cut out, your, take your cut out, remove the front covering on one side. Like I said, the fence is done this way as well. Then take this piece and you want to glue it. You don't want to use a ton of glue. You kind of have to be careful on this part, but just add glue to it. I did add some glue on these little spiky things, but again, be very careful. You don't want to get tons of glue up there, just a little bit and a little bit down here. If you get too much, it's going to squish out and you can get it off the plastic once it dries the the excess glue it just takes a little bit to do it so I try not to get too much on there and I might do a little right here just to help hold that then take this piece I'm gonna I found it worked better to get the top part up there first Lay it down, wipe off my excess glue there on the sides. And you don't want to slide it around because that's going to smear your glue. And then just kind of tap it down till you know it's on there good. And that glue will dry. This uh, glue that I use is Eileen's, Eileen's Fast Grab Tacky Glue will dry clear. But you can see I got, got it all over this, and you can't really see it now. There's a couple little spots if you turn it right in the light. And then once you get those two pieces put together, it looks like I might have to trim this off at the top here just a bit. So I'm going to do a little trim. This plastic you can cut real easy with scissors. There we go. Now, I'm going to take, this is a corner piece, which fits just like this. So you just want to put some glue down inside of that. Again, don't use tons, just kind of, you just want enough for it to hold. And then you're going to glue 
one side like that. And I found it best to push it up in there and then push down this way. And then you're going to glue this piece like this. And you probably, to glue this, you need to trim off these little excess pieces on the side here. Just a little slight trim. And you want to make sure that you get these flush down there at the bottom. And if you get off, it looks like I'm off a little bit there, but that's okay. I can fix that. And you want to sit and let that dry. And don't mess with it too much because it'll come unglued. So you just kind of want to make sure it's stuck to it well and then set it off to the side to dry. If you can need any trimming, you can do that later. Once it's dry, you remove the backing for the back piece and it's done and then like I said that's going to attach right here to this piece your um you probably would be better off doing the attaching it to up here first I think to get it straight and then you'll know if you have to do any trimming because it looks like you might have to do some trimming on the part that goes to the back so I would attach that way. The roof, um, you cut this piece of chipboard earlier for the roof. Uh, and all I did was cover it with the brown chipboard. I just covered it with the cardstock. Cover the top, just like we did these pieces here, or for here. Cover it, fold it over, and then cut another piece to fit on the back so it's completely covered. So um, you, you want this not the, the folded over, the side where it's folded over, you want the other side, that's where you're going to attach these two. And again, these aren't gonna be seen a lot, so I'm just wondering if it might be better to do a, no. So just put some glue here. And again, this is going to be up under there, so you're not going to see it, the excess glue. And then, you want to attach this side first, right along the edge, and then the other side. Try to get it on there as straight as you can. And then you're going to let that sit and dry. And then once that's dry, you'll put glue here, turn it upside down, and attach it to your front porch here. And then the next thing uh, we're going to do are the steps. And I'm not going to video the steps. They're very simple to make. And um, it's just kind of like a couple of boxes. And um, I, But I will show it on the blog. And then at, that's pretty much it. From that point on, it's up to you how much further you want to take this. You could use shutters if you want. Uh, the same file does have, if you go into Cricut Design Space and you click on images from your canvas and you type in fence in the search bar, then you will find all sorts of this ornate railing. And there's gates in there. If you want to put a gate on the front, you could do that. Um, there's just all sorts of things you could do and just manipulate them to what size. Um, and that's basically pretty much it. I was not too picky about how this lined up. It's kind of difficult to do that. If you want to try to mess with it, you might, and a different pattern might be easier. You could put a shorter gate if you want. Again, it's up to you. And I have these two big pieces of chipboard. This is black, just plain black chipboard that I get. It's a medium weight chipboard by Graphics that I get um, off of Amazon. So if you wanted to, you could extend and add another base 
then attach your house to it and then maybe do a tree over here and your graveyard and that type of thing, which I might do. I haven't decided yet. Um, I think if you do that for um, storage purposes, I would not attach this to this base. I would just attach these two pieces together on the opposite side. Um, you could cover it with sand and make it in little grass patches. I mean, again, it's just how extensive you want to do it. Uh, and that's about it. And um, like I said, I'll post the other. I'll finish this up, the house, the railings, and everything. And then add the post to the blog tonight. And that should be it. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will keep showing um, images on my blog on the, that last post as I do a few more things that I want to do to mine. And you can, again, use those ideas or stop wherever you're at. So, Well, thank you for joining me, and I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you finished it up and will be displaying it through October with your other Halloween decorations. Have a great day. See ya.